continue in our vein of uh, servanthood and and today we're going to talk a little bit about the attitude of of a servant the attitude of a servant we've uh, spent some time about the uh, empathy and the compassion we've talked a little bit about um, volunteering we've talked about discernment winning when to know when one needs to um, uh, kick in and and help. And today, I want to spend some time actually um, just um, talking about the attitude of a servant. Uh, the attitude of a servant is probably um, most important and it is attached and akin to uh, intent. The attitude and intent, and they are two different things. The, the intent, we talked about it on last week um, and the week before. The intent is the purpose. What is it that is designed in your mind or in your heart? And so you can have a design or something can be designed to work a certain way, but the attitude can be off. And the attitude has to deal with the behavior that is attached to the intention. So you have an intent. Intent refers to purpose. It refers to design. And then attitude has to deal with the behavior that is attached to the design. So what am I saying? Uh, as an example, you can do something and do it and it's good. It's, it's good for mankind. It's, it's good for your community. It's, it's good for your family. However, if your behavior is not uh, correct in the intent, then you have received your uh, reward. And some people, um, and not trying to be too negative, some people uh, want recognition from being a servant. And so when they do things or um, uh, they are connected with something, they want to make sure that the attention then is drawn to them. And part of being a servant is being able to serve without recognition. How can you continue to serve if you don't be paid for it? Can you continue to serve even if you're not elevated? Can you continue to serve if no one recognizes you? Can you continue to serve if you don't get the pat on the back? The behavior behind what you do is so vital because if the attitude or the behavior is correct, God then says, great is your reward in heaven. If your attitude is not correct, then the Bible tells us in Matthews, you have already received your reward. And so there is a difference. Will you get the reward now on earth and then lose the reward in heaven? Or will you surpass your emotions and your sensory perception and know that what you are doing is you are extending or building the kingdom of God? Now, when a servant um, um, begins to operate, he must be able or she must be able to discern between what is the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. These two kingdoms are very separate. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Um, Jesus put it this way um, when he was teaching his disciples to pray, I think in the book of Matthews and I think maybe in the book of Mark, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so John, then John the Baptist in the book of John uh, says, Behold um, the Lamb of God, which taketh up the way the sins of the world, 
And then he said that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. So what is the kingdom of God when we're serving? The kingdom of God is not meat, it's not drink, it's not, uh, it's not um, uh, ethereal. And what I mean by um, ethereal, it's now, it's something that you can touch. The kingdom of God is a philosophy. It is how one lives. It is how um, one operates. It is a spiritual kingdom. Which means uh, I'm not after a reward necessarily on the earth. The kingdom of God is the statutes of God. It is the laws of God. Uh, the kingdom of God is Exodus chapter number 20. When he begins to talk about the laws and we call them, or he called them the Ten Commandments. These, uh, the, this is the kingdom of God that we operate in the earth under the laws and the philosophy of God. Now the kingdom of heaven is very different and we understand that the kingdom of heaven can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and even when we go down to the that verse number 15 that last verse and also 1 Thessalonians chapter number 14 starting at the 15th verse we know that there is an eternal kingdom in heaven it is the place of the abode of the Lord Jesus Christ and God himself the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter number 21 that he shall descend from heaven with his saints and they shall make war with God and make God and so there is a place where we are going to go and this place is uh, prepared for a prepared people and so when we start um, uh, operating in terms of being a servant God is wanting us to operate in the kingdom of God Amen. he wants us to operate in the kingdom of God be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord and so when we begin to serve and we begin to work it is not because we are looking for an ethereal reward Amen. we're not looking for uh, someone to shake our hands or to give us a trophy or to give us some money we are working for the kingdom of God on our way to heaven. Mm -hmm. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not working to get in heaven. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us in Timothy that we are saved by grace through faith. Amen. Not of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the only way that we're saved, we're not saved by our works. Mm -hmm. Well, come on now. Yes. So there are some uh, religions that believe that you can work your way into heaven and you can work your way out of heaven. There is no scripture to, the, to support this. This means that if we make it to heaven, tell somebody if you make it, amen, amen. it's only going to be by the grace of God. Amen. It's not going to even be by speaking in tongues and baptized in Jesus' name. If you make it to heaven, it's going to be by the mercy and grace of God that you make it in. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm so glad. I don't have to speak in tongues because I want to go to heaven. I speak in tongues because I want to give him the praise. But it's by his grace and by his mercy that he saves me. Amen. A tongue could not save me. Just being dunked in the water will not save me. But his grace and his mercy follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell shout now because it's only by his mercy and grace that you're here right now it's only by his grace it's only by his mercy so we begin to operate not because we are working to get saved we have been saved unto good works 
All right. There's a difference. It's a difference. I'm working because I want to go to heaven. That means it's focused on me. It's focused on last week pride. But when I realize that I'm not strong enough to take myself to heaven, I work because God is merciful. God is good. God is gracious. So I'm not working because I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm working because I already know that he has put me in heavenly places. Oh, come on, somebody. And when you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you're not working to go to heaven, that your name has already been signed in the books and the other books, that I know how to give his name the praise. In the good times and in the bad times. And when I am frustrated, I'm not giving him the praise to get to heaven. I'm giving him the praise because I'm already in heavenly places. Somebody give God a praise. I'm already in. So when you understand, it's not that gets you in. It's your attitude. Yes. Yes. Touch your neighbor and say there are a lot of people who have done a lot of good works. But they're going to go to hell. Oh, that, that was low. Y'all were loud, right? That's the first phrase. See, there are a lot of people who have the works of God. Don't have the attitude. I would rather have the attitude and my works be burned. First Corinthians chapter number three. For when we get to heaven, the Bible tells us that God will try our works by fire. Y'all hear that? What he's saying is what you did for your family, what you did for your community, what you did for your church is going to be set on fire. And if it was for an earthly reward, it's going to be burned up. Woo. So your work is going to be tried by fire in heaven. And what is the difference for your work standing in heaven Versus your work being burned. Attitude. What is your attitude toward God? Does he owe you something? Or do I owe him all? Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but Jesus white in white as snow. So I don't come to the crystal out of obligation. I don't come to him out of just pure obligation and what someone expects. I come because I owe him. Hallelujah. How can you go to church and not give his name thanks? How can one sit in church and participate in church very passively when we owe him? All things. Hallelujah. And an attitude, the wrong attitude or miss attitude can get your works burned. Amen. Or matter of fact, you cannot make it to heaven. It's scary to know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are folk who have lived a Christian life mm. will not go to heaven. Mm. Very true. Jesus. Matthew chapter number seven. And men and women will stand before him. You can read for yourself. In your name, I fed the poor. In the name, I fed the hungry. And Jesus said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. 
Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You knew me, but I didn't know you. Touch your neighbor and say, it's more than you knowing God. <laughs> when you stand before God, waiting in line, you better hope and pray he knows you. And if he knows you, the Bible tells us in Revelation 22 that the book will be open. And then the other books will be open. The book of life. And he will look in the, the book of life to see if your name is there. Now I understand the song they used to sing when the road is called up yonder. R-O-L-L. I thought they were talking about biscuits. Come on, somebody. I really did. I said, why? But what they were saying was when the Bible is open and then the book of life is open, he will determine if your name is in the book of life. Oh my goodness. Touch a neighbor and say, I know they call your role, I mean they call your name on the role at work. Look at them. And they call your name at church. But will God call your name in heaven? He won't even call you by your name if your name is not in the book of life. He won't even say, Maurice, depart from me. He'll just say, I don't even know who you are. Can you imagine standing before God and saying that the crystal is a hypocrite? It was backward. And God saying, I don't even know who you are. Jesus. Now that's punishment. Yes, it is. To work to have the form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. And the Bible says even that, as such, turn away having the form of godliness. And so when it comes to being a servant, God says, before you start doing, let's examine your attitude. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why do you do what you do? Amen. When do you do what you do? Where do you do what you do? What do you do what you do? When you do it, is it only at the crystal? Hmm. Because anyone can praise them if there are a few hundred folk coming together. It's easy to praise God. Well, sort of kind of get in the spirit. But what if you're in a hostile environment? like your job. Let's see you praise God on your job. Or do you become like the people on your job? Probably 80% of the people on your job are complainers. Do you then attach yourself Oh my, I just felt that one. Touch your neighbor and say, all of us wear Facades. Oh. <laughs> What's a facade? It's a, a, mask. a mask. A facade is a way that we want to be perceived. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be perceived on our job like we are just crazy about Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
because we don't want anyone to say that we're a zealot or we're just crazy. We want to blend in. Touch your neighbors. I just want to blend in. I, I don't want to jump over pews and I don't want to fly in the sky and I don't want to run around the church. I just want to be normal. I just didn't want to get fired. Been there, done that. Come on, somebody. But when you've got fire on the inside, what can man do? Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God said, now, if I gave my life for you, come on. What will you give in return? Mm -hmm. Think about the greatest thing that the Lord has done for you. Some of you, he's healed your body. Mm -hmm. He's given you positions. You've earned degrees. And you've done things that you know you couldn't do in the natural. Amen. 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 Come on. And then he says, now all I want you to do is tell somebody. Amen. But we... We blend in because we don't want anybody to know how good God is. But Romans chapter 1 verse number 16 tells us, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believes, to the Jew first and then Unto the Gentile. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, Don't pray with the door closed. Pray with the door open. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. That's what Daniel did. He said, I'm not going to go in the cellar and praise him. I'm going to praise him so everybody knows that my God is able. Amen. That goes back to attitude, yes. behavior. Mm -hmm. Your behavior is your character. Mm -hmm. Just grab somebody and say, your talk is so cheap, it's cheap. Because everybody can talk. How oh, I love the Lord. Coming on a Honda. But can you love him? When it doesn't feel like you can feel his love. Amen. Amen. Do you still praise him? Yes. When your life is filled with anxiety. Amen. Amen. Can you worship him despite your emotional limitations? Amen. Mm. Amen. Some of us have a praise him because the things are good. And some of us have a praise him anyhow. Amen. Amen. If it's good, I'm going to praise him. Amen. If it's bad, I'm going to praise him. Amen. If I'm up, I'm going to praise him. Amen. If I'm down on the ground, I'm still going to praise him. There might be tears in my eyes, but I'm going to. That's behavior. Thank you. Someone told me on my job, and we're going to get into this. Someone told me on my job. Um, Last week I was on campus um, and um, I've just gotten to this point now, gotten bold because we're so close to the end of the time. I'm starting to pray with my students. Amen. Come on in, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? If they said no, I said, okay, you step out, I'm going to pray, and then you come <laughs> back in. That's how bold I'm getting. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's because the Lord right. placed me there at that university not just to pontificate, to be a witness. Exactly. Thank you, right. Jesus. Amen. He said, Maurice, how can they go to heaven if you don't share the gospel? Amen. That's right. Hello? Amen. Amen. So the dean called me last week. He said, I want you to come and talk to me, Dr. Carter. <laughs> he said, I hear that many of the students are saying that you are witnessing or something is going on in your office and your other colleagues can hear the shouting and praising or whatever. He said, now... Uh, this is a liberal university. I said liberal means free, right? <laughs> he said, in a way, in a way. 
He said, now, I want to know, what are you talking about? So I began to testify to the dean. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you. Y'all didn't hear this. Yes. He got baptized in Jesus' name. He said, I've never heard it given like that, Maurice. And he said, I always knew there was something different. He said, let's go to the pool right now. I said, man, there ain't no pool. He said, there's a pool on campus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. So I went to Walmart, put, found some warm-ups. He went home and got his swimming trunks. And I took him down in the name of the Lord. I'm not asking for any rewards. What I'm saying is, somebody is waiting for you to share the gospel. I thought I was going in to get fired. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Come on. Even if I'm fired, I'm not fired. Come on, Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The man went down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So how many people in your community, how many people on your job are waiting for you to tell your testimony? But we want to. We don't want to sound like a zealot. But saints, we're coming to some times now. Come on. That the line is being drawn in the sand. The enemy keeps pushing and pushing. Hello? Amen. He keeps pushing. And saints keep backing up. We keep backing up. There comes a time when the enemy puts you in a corner where you have to fight your way out. Let's look at 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy, I think. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. My God. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Does everybody have the the handout? Mm -hmm. Okay, no? no. Okay. No. Would somebody go in the office and give me the handouts that should be on the card, please? The attitude of a servant. Paul here begins to provide a discourse. on the abstract of a servant, the attitude, the, the bottom line is attitude, behavior, why do you do what you do. Why do you do? Why do you do what you do? What motivates you? What's the internal peace that calls you to go beyond when you feel like quitting. Mm -hmm. All of us feel like quitting. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thought about it about six times this week. <laughs> because if it were easy, if pastoring was easy, everybody would be a pastor. <laughs> Come on. But there are times when your physicality your emotions, when you're looking at, you're weighing what you do is really meaning something to others. It 
doesn't just feel like you're either doing enough or even if it matters. Touch your neighbor and say, no matter how much you minister to people, people still going to do what they want to do. People still going to do what they want to do. Even when they don't want to do it. Even when they don't want to do it. And oftentimes when you are a servant of God, sometimes you can want something more for people than they want for themselves. And that's a dangerous place to be because it builds up frustration. You can want so much for people to love God, to know God, to be all that they can be more than what they want to be. Come on, Pastor. And when that happens, again, it sets up frustration. The Jews have a word called et. It's Hebraic. Et has to deal with a period of time. what it is. It's a season, et. The word et in Hebrew means a period or a season of time. So all of us, according to Ecclesiastes, <coughs> has et, et. There is a difference between time elapsing, which is et, versus what the Hebrews call yum. Everybody say yum. Yum. Yum, yum is within et. Yum is what is defined a most important a most important time most important time wow. which means is time for you or are you for time oh, wow. is time made for you or are you made for time? In Ecclesiastes 12, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. So all of us are given, according to Psalm, amount of et. But within et is young. And yum is, everybody say yum again. Yum. Yum. yum is 